My name is Soyang and I'm a PhD student in civil and environmental engineering. Uh, I think I can uh, share my uh, unique experience as a, a student doing energy research here at Stanford. Uh, the thing that I like the most is that you can actually do the very interdisciplinary study. For example, uh, my research topic is actually uh, to study how to catalyze more investment capital, especially uh, private investment capitals, to promote the uh, clean energy innovation and also combating climate change. And as you see, uh, this requires a lot of uh, different academic disciplines, like for example, economics, finance, public policy, and environmental engineering. And I've been getting a great support from uh, faculties and professors across the entire campus. And you can actually take the courses that are actually built to be uh, uh, interdisciplinary. So uh, I really want to share more about my experience and my own resources after this talk. But for, uh, to give you a brief flavor of what I do uh, as an interdisciplinary researcher here at Stanford, I'm going to uh, show you uh, my recent paper that analyzed market performance of low carbon investing. So uh, in other words, uh, we, we analyze whether investors in the, uh, the capital market actually earns extra return, extra risk-adjusted return by investing in the firms that are emitting less carbon emissions. And I think uh, Professor Barker had already uh, made a great start for me instead because this is a very important topic. And what uh, Professor Burke and other studies he mentioned in his speech is, uh, is great because they actually build one more layer of consensus on what we should do uh, uh, to combat climate change. Because in 2000, we affirmed that uh, the climate change is actually happening and this is man-made. Uh, and thanks to Burke's, uh, Professor Burke's study and others, we also know now that climate change will have profound impact on the functioning of a human society and also academic uh, economic pro productivity. But what we don't have as a consensus is, uh, is market performance. Uh, like saying, like, what does that mean you know, in, in the market to, to manage climate change? Uh, there are uh, still today uh, a, a very active debate in, uh, in in terms of theory and also in terms of empirical evidence that you know uh, the links between the, the environmental the, the links between the environmental and market performance are very mixed. So uh, this is a very important topic. But what we achieved recently is at the Paris Agreement, they actually highlight this is very important to put the finance and public policy in this area as well. Like they highlight, we need a consistent flow of capital to combat climate change. And uh, Alicia already gave the number, but uh, the International Energy Agency gave like a bigger number that project, we, the world will require 53 trillion US dollars in cumulative term by 2035 to meet the goals that was agreed by Paris Agreement. But then, you know, if you see the scale, like, this, is, this cannot be covered by like a, like a few uh, value or mission-oriented investors. We really need to change the entire market to move forward. But if you see the markets today, the capital markets today, there are only a few investors who are actually uh, including the environmental factors into their investment criteria and try to align their returns with their, uh, their investment portfolio, uh, the, the non-traditional financial objectives such as environment. So a uh, majority of the, the investors remains resisting to, uh, to manage the climate change because they think that managing climate change may lead to the suboptimal decision. So this actually leads to uh, our fundamental question for our research, that why investors think that being green, uh, being green is a, a suboptimal decision. And uh, we think that investors really need a, a better understanding of how, uh, how the market evaluates the firm's environmental actions. So this study actually provides a, a, a clear empirical evidence in order to uh, clarify the relationship between firm's environmental actions and financial performance. But before going into this, I mean, I'm going to give you a lot of numbers and technical terms and everything. But, you know, think about yourself. You know, if you are the, you, 
if you are the MBA and you are you are planning to be a, a investment manager after this, or if you are just investing your own uh, portfolio, and then you know if you are able to see uh, considering those environmental factors can actually give you the actual return, then this will be very very interesting uh, outcomes. So uh, what we really try to do is to bring like people like you to really make your your uh, your uh, like investment behavior to change. And yeah. So we set the four uh, research questions, uh, which are sequential. First, we just ask like whether this low carbon investing actually gives you the uh, extra return. And the second question that we, we ask is, if there is any additional returns, is that just for the, uh, the, the benefit of high risk, high return kind of investment strategy? Or do we actually find something extra, like abnormal return um, that we call alpha? And, and the third question is then, you know, we really want to know what does it mean for, uh, by investing in those carbon efficient firms. And the fourth is we really want to have like robustness on our observation as well. So the methodology that you, you, we use is coming from the uh, financial economics. Uh, first, we use the portfolio analysis. Uh, we build a portfolio we call uh, efficient minus inefficient portfolio. We call EMI portfolio for short. Uh, you can really simply think about you are actually changing your investment strategy that you are selling out your carbon inefficient firm stock and buying your, uh, buying your um, carbon efficient stocks. And you are putting no extra cost to change your investment strategy. And we track the, uh, the, the performance of this uh, EMI portfolio to see if whether changing your investment strategy will really give you the extra returns. For, uh, to, and then, you know, what you really expect as an investment manager or just individual investors is that you don't want to take extra returns to get extra, uh, like you don't want to take extra risk to get extra returns. You really want to find the alpha. So we try to, uh, we use the asset pricing model to, uh, to price the, whether this uh, extra return can be explained by risk factors that is well known uh, at the, uh, now at the worst it is and everything. And, um, and then we run the regression analysis to uh, examine the, the relationship between firm's characteristics and carbon efficiency. And the robustness, we were running a lot of our correlation tests as well. So uh, our data was uh, 736 U.S. farms uh, from 2005 to 2015, and our data set was very unique. Uh, we merged four databases, uh, two costs. They collect uh, the green, uh, absolute greenhouse gas emission data of each farm in their uh, data set, which compose, uh, comp uh, consists of 13,000 farms in the entire world. And the MSCI, they not only collect the environmental data, but they also provide the ratings on their ESG, uh, environmental, social, and government uh, performance. And CompuStat and CRSB is well-known uh, data set for uh, very typical financial analysis, such as like a stock price returns and uh, financial variables. So the main findings we have is like uh, from the first uh, portfolio analysis, we actually find our EMI portfolio exhibit uh, large, positive, and cumulative return after 2009. So this is very interesting. I mean, there are many more ways to build the EMI portfolio, but I will show you that just one simple case of EMI portfolio construction. But if you see the upper table, this is average return on EMI portfolio. You can definitely do the math. Like uh, carbon efficient firm stock actually outperform carbon inefficient firm stock. But if you go uh, see the later period after 2009, the difference become larger and also statistically significant. This is a very interesting result. If you see the uh, cumulative, uh, cumulative return on the EMI portfolio, you can definitely see the, the cumulative return going upwards scale uh, after 2009. The red line that I drew on the uh, on the figure is uh, September 2009, uh, eight when Lehman Brothers filed their bankruptcy. So this is a very interesting trend that we find, and we also try to talk about more about like what investors really consider. They really find the high sharp ratio, which means you get uh, extra risk adjusted return for one unit of um, uh, volatility that you have. 
So um, if you see, I'm going to just point out this sharp ratio in the later period. The, all the EMI portfolio have the highest, uh, highest sharp ratio compared to other factor mimicking portfolio, which is very interesting for the in investors as well. And now we want to find whether like uh, where this extra return is coming from, whether is that from alpha or is it beta. And we actually find this investment strategy is actually giving you the abnormal return. And this is annualized to 3.5 to 5.4% per year, which is huge for the investment managers. And uh, this is very typical um, GRS test. But what we do is uh, we run, uh, we, we regress the extra return on our EMI portfolio on other uh, well-known risk factors. And if we find the alpha is uh, positive and highly significant, that means there's something else that can explain our extra return than the other risk factors. And our statistical findings actually shows that, yes, there are something more, and this is huge. And then we also find what does it mean, you know, investing in those low carbon companies. And we find the low carbon companies tend to be a good firms in terms of financial performance and also corporate governance. So you, you are not only investing for the extra returns, but you are actually investing in the good firms. So, I mean, we cannot really firmly say by just five years of, of observation that, you know, carbon efficiency can be a good factor. But actually, this can be a good signal that you want to find the good firms and also look for some good, like higher risk adjusted returns. But what we really care about is like also the robustness of our observation. So we tested uh, some other risk, uh, some other macroeconomic factors such as like uh, energy market prices or unconventional monetary policy after 2009 uh, financial crisis may affect this, uh, this trend. But actually we find that our observation is very robust from, uh, apart from those, uh, those uh, changes in the market. So I'm gonna fast forward it. Uh, we think that this is very important because if you if you are an investor, you really figure out whether uh, managing this climate change is actually extra financial or financial itself. So uh, because if it is extra financial, then you might bleach your fiduciary obligation by investing in those uh, carbon efficient firms. But otherwise, then you can really align your own goals and your own return, uh, your investment portfolios. Uh, with the uh, combating climate change goals. For the policymakers, you really need to figure out whether this is uh, giving you uh, extra negative or positive externality and be able to design the new policy that can really allocate the capital based on the carbon efficiency. So the country vision of this paper is to clarify the risk and return relationship in low carbon investing. Like previous studies were only asking whether it pays to be green. But for the investors to move, to, to change their behaviors, they need more. They need to know like how and when and why they're getting paid more by investing in those firms. So we are, uh, we are giving uh, academic evidence to the, not only the, the academia, but also the investors that you, know, you are actually getting market incentives on considering the, the environment factors in your inv investment portfolio. And uh, this clarification will really catalyze more investment in combating climate change. So uh, I know it is very, very technically heavy, but uh, I usually spend an hour to explain the entire thing. But you are able to, uh, you are able to pull up more uh, details on, on the full report that you can find it from that link. And also you can always email me to ask questions about this paper or anything about the energy research or energy finance. Thank you.